Hey guys, I've got some excellent news. Did you finally figure out how to tie your shoes with loop and swoop instead of bunny ears? No, I'm not a sailor. I don't derive my self-worth from overcomplicated knots. But the North American Friends Movie Club has a new sponsor. That's wonderful news! I can finally afford to get root beer in a glass bottle. Oh no, Britt. Have you been drinking plastic bottled root beer this whole time? Yeah, I've been buying two liters of plastic bottle root beer and chugging it as fast as possible because it goes flat if you put it in the back of the fridge. Brent, when you're done reading this ad, you'll have the bubbliest root beers in Nova Scotia City. I've just sent over the new script, so let's record this real quick and then we can start the show. You got it. Ready when you are. This episode of the North American Friends Movie Club is brought to you by Forgiveness. <laughs> Have you been wronged? <laughs> Betrayed? Failed by those you trusted most? For centuries, the only solution to these problems was either crippling denial or violent retribution. Suck it up or f*** it up, you had to pick one. <laughs> Finally, there's a better way. Forgiveness. Forgiveness! Sure, it's fun to watch your enemy suffer, but that joy doesn't last. Eventually, you're left with a hollow feeling that clings to you like a shadow until you finally find the strength to let go of your anger. That's why, no matter what you find out in the next 90 seconds, forgiveness is always the right choice. <laughs> Whether it's a financial deception. Or a monetary mismanagement. Or your co-host lost all the ad money from the first two episodes of a movie <laughs> podcast located in North America. Forgiveness is always the correct response. <laughs> Podcast timeout. Yeah, podcast timeout. Nate, did you spend the ad money from the first two episodes? <laughs> what did you spend all the goo money on, Nate? Magic beans. You spent our money on magic beans? You spent $6 million on <laughs> beans that you plant in the ground and eventually grow into a giant beanstalk? No, of course not. That would be silly. Magic Beans is the name of the horse that I bet all of our money on. <laughs> <laughs> I am so mad, but that's such a good name for a racehorse. I'm furious, but also smiling because that's one of the best horse names I've ever heard. Look, it was supposed to be a sure thing. Who tipped you off? Sneaky Keith. <laughs> The guy who's friends with Dupli Duplicitous Dan? Head capo of the Flim Flam Boys? They didn't tell me Magic Beans had a serious case of Jelly Skelly. Is that the disease that makes horse bones rubbery? Yeah, I could tell when the race started that Magic Beans had gelatin skeleton. It was very obvious. She went to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is terrible. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But I forgive you, Nate. Yeah, I forgive you, too, because you're so cute. Aw, uh, thanks, guys. Just promise me you won't lose any more ad money gambling on horses. I promise I will definitely win next time. Let's start the show. This is what it sounds like when we do a podcast. We're currently doing one. This is the North American Friends Movie Club. And you might notice a little something about our name. And that's Friends Comes Before a Movie Club. So I got to ask my two little morning friends. How are we doing? Well, it's not really morning for me, but it's morning for you. Yeah, and it's, it's 1130, which is still considered morning in my world. So, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm... Um, I'm back is sore. Um, I've been very productive though this week. Okay, go on. I I put together a weight bench, and um, I'm preparing to hang a heavy bag. Ooh. Um, I put together a new bed. Ooh. And I think that's it. I think that's all I put together. He's gonna work out and then sleep. That's pretty good. Yeah. The bed has uh, LED lights in it. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I got that fucking thing looking like a Tiesto concert every night. It's fucking great. <laughs> Where are the lights? Uh, underneath the headboard. Okay. Do they change color? Is it for design or purpose? It's they look. I opened the box. It came with LED lights and USB ports and power outlet. And I'm like, what Ooh. the fuck is this? So up on the headboard, you can plug in your phone, your whatever you need to, and you can turn the different LED like colors on and for atmosphere, for ambiance. Mm-hmm. You're in the future. Well, like I said, I don't use the LED lights that much. Just to when I want to get Melissa going. Oh no. You, you make it purple and then you see what happens. I make it purple, but I just do it as a joke. I'll put it on all different colors and make it like flash like a strobe effect. So it's like uh, <laughs> at a rave and like we're trying to sleep. It just has to take the remote in my hand and mm-hmm. it's fun. Yeah. That is fun. It's a good bit. I like saying Tiesto concert as well. Yeah, that was good. I don't know what that is. Tiesto is a, a, he's a DJ, right? Yeah, I think he's uh-huh. a DJ. <laughs> House music. Come on, Kate. Why don't you say EDM and I'll say, I know what that is. Because it's not as funny as the word Tiesto. Well, it sounds like something you would order from Taco Bell. Mm, Tiesto Crunch. That reminds me, this is a good take I have. This will make people upset. Um, <laughs> you know you know how people say Taco Bell is just the same, like four or five ingredients in different orders? Mm-hmm. Sure. So is Italian food. Yeah, no, that's true. It's like tomatoes and cheese and noodles. And veal. Yeah. I think most genres of food are kind of like that. You know what I mean? No, not really, but. Like every genre of food has its own like four or five ingredients. The staples is what you're saying. Canadian food has chips and gravy and cheese Mm -hmm. and ketchup. Sure. (laughs) Yeah, that's our cuisine. What would you say our cuisine is then, I guess? Seafood and beef i mean a lot of beef where i'm living we we got lots of beefs here i was gonna say i don't think nate gets much seafood up there not a lot of fresh seafood and there was another thing i wanted to talk about no that's that's enough food talk um other than that i'm doing pretty good um i don't think i have anything else besides the tiesto bed on new well you were telling me before kate got here that you got your truck stolen oh i'm (gasps) fucking livid about that are you kidding not kidding in a video game. <laughs> oh, in a video game. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, who cares? I care. It took a look. <laughs> it's a lot of work. What to- video game are you playing? Daisy. It's the one where you're in a zombie wasteland and you got to survive amongst 60 other human players. And that's a huge map and you have to gather resources. And I had a fucking tarp covered truck with. 600 slots of inventory. I had that thing packed to the gills full of survival stuff. And I go in waiting for Kate to come for the podcast. And I go, let's check on the base. Go to the base and the truck is gone. Blew the doors right off the base. Stole everything. So, you know, and I'm probably the first person to notice this. It's kind of like when the zombies hit that the real people you got to worry about are the humans. Yeah, Mm. that's Uh allegory for life. That's, you know what, Nate, it's very true. Hundreds, thousands of zombies in this game, they don't do nothing to me. Never stole your truck. You're right. Just like that uh, episode of Last of Us with the Bob and his husband. Oh. Ultimately, it wasn't the mushroom people that killed them. It was humans. Mm-hmm. That was a good, that was a great episode. It really was good. That was the best episode of that season. Me Getting my tr- my truck stolen in Daisy is the same as what happened to Bob and his husband in The Last of Us. Okay, fair. Okay. Both things are fake, but yes. It's not fake to me. How are you, Catherine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I am I need to go to the dentist. I haven't been in several years, and I, my <laughs> tooth hurts. On Which one? Off. What tooth? I don't know. I got, I got teeth in my mouth that... Yeah. But I do a really good job of brushing. And every time I go, like, this is this is something that happens. Like, I won't go to the dentist for five years. And then I'll go. And they'll be like, oh, when's the last time you went to the dentist? And I'll be like, I don't know, half a decade ago. And they're like, oh, your teeth look pretty good. I was like, yeah, it's because I brush my teeth for, like, five minutes at a time. Mm. Like, I will brush my teeth. But that, that's going to wear down your gums. Not if you're being gentle. 
so far I'm okay. And I use, um, I use Sensodyne because my teeth were already kind of sensitive. So I don't know. Are we saying dentists are kind of overrated frauds? No, I'm not going to say that. I'll get on the record and say they, they want you to go more than you need to go. And I think that's the most condescending question ever. When's the last time you came to the dentist? I don't fucking know. When's the last time you got, went to manor school? I'd be like, when's the last time you went to a therapist? Yeah, exactly. When's the last time you worked on your brain? But my dentist I was going to. Um, I don't really want to go back to him because he has like party energy. I don't know how to explain it. Like I can't take him seriously because he has all these photos of like partying. Yeah, you don't want your you don't want your dentist partying. I want a boring dentist. Right. It is like office was cool and it was in this neat building and he had all these and I, I don't know. I just I can't trust him. I need to find somebody else. The party dentist. He should lean into it. I want to go to a dentist where he goes home and he puts on a on his uh, house coat and uh, some slippers. Mm-hmm. And then he just opens a big book called Teeth. That's the kind of dentist I want. Exactly. Yeah. Like I want to, he, he should be part of like, he's on surfing a subreddit of enamel and stuff like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Priority dentist has to lean into it, in my opinion. Nate, Did I tell how you? Are go- you? Sorry. We haven't checked in on Nate. We're just chit-chatting. I was just, no, it's fine. I was, well, I have to get it out because it's going to bother me. Um, I rewatched I rewatched uh, the miniseries Chernobyl. Ooh. So good. I'm convinced I could probably sit in and cover a break in the reactor room. Sure. It's not like you would have done any worse. It's all about the delicate and seductive dance of uh, counterbalancing <laughs> the heat with mm. the reactivity mm. and with the water. Okay. If you can master that. <laughs> if you, it's a delicate if dance. You, it's a delicate and seductive dance. <laughs> and seductive dance. <laughs> a lot of knobs and tubes there. Oh, yeah. It's funny that you're laughing because that's how the character described it at the court. Uh, it's a seductive dance between reactivity and water um and essentially that's what it is it's all about controlling the reactivity and keeping that balance life is balance and i'm pretty sure i I could make sure i could input the graphite rods control rods enough to keep it uh where it should be one thing i liked about that show is that they introduce like characters who don't understand how nuclear fission works so they have to explain it to them like they're idiots. And I really appreciated that because it was like there was characters representing me in the TV show. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, explain it to me like I'm a dumb idiot because I don't understand what's going on here. I didn't know a nuclear reactor between a hole and a wall. But I rewatched this and I'm like, I'm going to really pay attention to when this guy's talking about how they work. And I'm pretty sure I can help operate one and cover someone's break. I'm sure it's all, it's just like flying a plane, right? It's kind of (laughs) like you put it on cruise control for most of the time and it's only occasional. You only have to pay attention during liftoff, landing, and if there's turbulence. If Homer Simpson can do it, I could do it. Good point. Did you guys realize last episode, this episode, uh, we took it, we questioned the validity of the professions of doctors, mm-hmm. old people, dentists. Uh, air, pl- air dentists, uh, pilots, and nuclear physicists. No, no, no. You guys did. You literally said your dentist is a party dentist, and you just said that you can <laughs> land a plane. I didn't question the validity of dentists as a whole. That is where you come in. They can't have fun? They can't have a social life? I'm talking about my preference for my dentist as a one person. I picture he had, he's got like a vest with bright stripes on it and like squiggly patterns. No, he like owns a convertible. I think he has a timeshare in Florida. Oh. Like, he has photos of him at Burning Man. Mm-hmm. That yes. is, yep. so. Yeah, you uh-huh. got to get the fuck out of there, Kate. <laughs> yeah, it's time to run. <laughs> yeah, you got to get out of there quick. So to sum up, we're not, we're, we're not, dissing these professions we're just saying that with technology it's become easier to be one is that fair i can't i don't know yeah oh look hey sure 
I'll back you up Based on that. Based on what I said about nuclear fission, do you think I could help out in a control room? Certainly. Thank you. That's all my point is. Y- you're, you've been proved right in the past before. So we can't just de- we can't just deny you out of hand. Hundred percent. You know, my roommate Brianna, she she sent me a text the other day when I put out that little video of you talking about robes versus house coats. Yeah. She said he's not wrong. She right. said he's See? not wrong. I, said, I couldn't believe See? it. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> oh my. Brianna, welcome to the my welcome to the resistance. You know who you really pissed off is my sister Jennifer Brent that with your talk about the old people and wisdom and. Why? What's wrong? With Crawled you? up the wrong leg on that. What's what did she say? That you need to respect the elderly and why? I will leave it there, and I will <laughs> allow you to drift out into the world with your. I came up with hosp- hospice merch. Th- that was pretty good. I can't remember what it was, but it was good. There was where I just heard of um, a funny name for a hospice. It was a real name. It was like. Life springs, and I thought that was a bad name for a hospice. Yeah, because life mm-hmm. doesn't spring there. It ends exactly. There. Why yeah. is it named that? It should yeah. be called. Uh, what? Let's name our hospice. It should um, be something like. Last stop. A- end of the line. Let's think of a like a boating, t- like a dock. Uh, oh, heaven's like, dock. Heaven's oh. dock. <gasps> uh, we ours is called Ankyla, which is Gaelic for harbor. Harbor means oh, safe. Heaven's that. Harbor yeah. is even better. Yeah. Heaven's Harbor. Heaven's is even harbor. Better. There, we just did it. See? I like it. Thank you. It's good with teamwork. I hope Jennifer listens to this episode because that's the ultimate respect for all people. Yeah. He's helping them die. Heaven's Harbor. <laughs> we accomplished Heaven's so Heaven. much. We accomplished so much You're in this so 15 productive, minutes. You're so Brent. You're doing oh, so good. This week I'm killing it. Ear infections <laughs> and everything. I thought the old dog was going to be in Heaven's Harbor a couple of days ago. I was in rough shape with the ear, but the ears are bouncing back. <laughs> we did good. This. We, I'm proud of us. I love when, when can, like things happen and we do good, and that just was good. Mm-hmm. Good. Now let's switch to Nate. I've been wanting to hear about Nate's life. Uh, nothing. I don't think I have anything exciting to report. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, workout streak continues. We did day 60, day 60 yesterday, had a great workout, uh, watched Mission Impossible. I've been watching the Mission Impossible movies while I work out. And Ooh. somehow there is a Mission Impossible movie that has Philip Seymour Hoffman being a great bad guy. And somehow the movie sucks. It's almost unbelievable. Oh, It's like, you, 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 it'd be like if someone's like, I made a... Uh, chocolate peanut butter cheesecake and you're like really and then you took a bite and it sucked it, it mm. that's how it feels like you're like how is it possible everything you said is delicious on its own put together what went what went wrong which one was it the third one i just looked it up and like there's some parts of it that are great but just it's a weird franchise where the first movie is like this incredible noir spy thriller and then two and three are like the, everything's bad in t- early 2000s. And then they get good again when it gets to Ghost Protocol. It's just a weird franchise, but I like a Mission Impossible movie. I don't know if you guys knew that about me. Well, it's uh, it's shocking to me, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. I never thought I would ever take you for Mission Impossible, guy. Are you a J.J. Abrams fan? No. I, well, I'm not a not a fan. Because I didn't watch Lost, so I don't have this, like, feeling of betrayal that a lot of people seem to have. Mm, mm-hmm. I didn't either. Did you watch it, Brent? Lost? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's my, one of my favorite shows of all time. Oh, so you might like Mission Impossible 3. Maybe. Lost was so good. People, I, you, don't want, you guys don't have a curious mind. That's all. The people who don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Everything has to be cookie cutter in a box, tied up neat in a bow for you. I know that goes against what I'm saying about uh, Wes Anderson, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. trust me, to me, it makes sense. Yeah, sure. I'm a sucker for survival and island stuff, so you can put anything on there and I will watch that part. Did he get canceled? No, I think people just got like annoyed with him because of the ending of Lost and then his Star Wars movies are pretty terrible. So mm. when you piss off a Star Wars fan, they get... uh 
they don't got a lot else going on in their day, so they you can get a lot of attention from them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm asking for it right now. Uh-oh. Yeah, going after the Star Wars people. <laughs> they hated Star Trek though, and I loved the Star Trek movies. The first, the reboot was decent. Yeah, it was decent. And he did regarding Henry, which is quite good. That doesn't sound good. What's that about, Henry? Uh, Harrison Ford and Annette Bening, and Harrison Ford. Uh, has amnesia and has to learn how to talk and walk and um i do like harrison ford yeah we might do that one day on here he's pretty fun well speaking of pretty fun (laughs) speaking of pretty fun (laughs) yep yep, why don't we talk about the movie that i chose this week uh marches for money and so i chose the film die hard that's about trying to steal some money Mm-hmm. But before we talk about our favorite parts, I would love if Kate would tell us what happens in this movie. Absolutely. High above the city of L.A., a team of terrorists has seized a building, taken hostages, and declared war. One man has managed to escape, an off-duty cop hiding somewhere inside. He's alone, tired, and the only chance anyone has got... Bruce Willis is uh, John McClane. So John McClane is a police detective who works in New York, despite the fact that his children and wife live in Los Angeles. His wife, Holly, is a high up exec at the Nakatomi Corporation, which is inside Nakatomi Plaza. Uh, They have, it's Christmas and there's a Christmas party. And during the Christmas party, Some terrorists from West Germany, starring the radical Hans Gruber, uh, infiltrate the building in order to break into the building's vault to steal $640 million of untraceable bearer bonds. Uh, They are very uh, sophisticated terrorists, and there's a lot of violence and gunfire and eventually, John McClane, the cowboy, yippee ki motherfucker, wins the day. And Hans Gruber falls 30 stories down to the ground and wow. dies. The end. Well done, Kate. You, that's Good one job. of your best ones ever. You, you really yeah. fucking nailed it. Went for it. Let's talk about our favorite parts. Yeah, I got lost today. Yeah. Um, my first note is he's in the airport and he's got a stuffed bear for his daughter for Christmas. Um, stuffed bears aren't supposed to be a real bear. It was a Too real big. fuck. It, no, it was a re, no, like it was an actual bear stuffed, not like a real life bear, but it was like you know, stuffed bears are supposed to be whimsical and cute. And it wasn't like, a teddy bear, it yeah, was an actual it was stuffed a bear. bear. Yeah, and I was like, what the yeah. fuck is this? You just, I, if I TSA should have let him on the plane with it. Also, stuffed animals as presents for children is a fucking cop out, but you know, whatever. He's a, he's a cop. He doesn't think about his family. And cop he lives out. across the country. Oh, it's a cop out. That's good. Mm, yeah. Funny. Good. Uh, I have a question about the very beginning of the movie. If something you guys noticed, did you guys notice when he was um, in the airport at the very beginning of the movie and he's, he's leaving the airport that there's this lady with white hair and like the most beautiful pantsuit walking with confidence that I don't think I've ever seen in my entire life. So much so that it stole the entire scene from me. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Did you guys notice this glamorous lady in the first scene in the airport? I did not. I did not. But that is going to be Kate in about 40 years. It's exactly what I thought to myself. It already is Kate. No, no, no. no. Kate, you got to get a little whiter before this, before you hit this. But her energy exactly matches your energy right now. Like, this is how I imagine you moving through the world. Oh, my God. Like, you're going to be walking to Heaven's Harbor with that pantsuit on. <laughs> Heaven's Fuck Harbor. It. Getting extra fruit cups left and right. You have a little drawer full of fruit cups because you can't keep up with them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) having a christmas work party on christmas eve is insane it only happens in the movies but it's insane to me like that to me 
made the next 20 minutes hard to watch because all I kept on thinking about how insane is to have Christmas work party on Christmas Eve. It's a different work culture in 1988, though, you know? It was it was a big a big theme in a lot of movies we've watched from the 80s and 90s is like everybody's working so hard that and it's always an issue. It's you know, it's like uh it's my job, it's my career. I got to do this and I'm I'm uh not fulfilling my duties as a partner and a husband or a wife because of so much work. There's just so much work to do all the time. Yeah. That's what I noticed about Holly. Cause I remember thinking she's, she's not, she's making her nanny stay late on Christmas Eve with her children. Damn good. It's point. just not, I couldn't relate to it. I just good relate. point, Kate. I didn't put that together. <laughs> White woman privilege. I, I'm, yeah. And we find out later that, that person is an undocumented worker, so she's probably being taken advantage of. So, yeah, mm. probably not getting paid, or or not mm. getting paid what she's worth, especially considering how rich this lady must be working at Nakatomi Plaza. Can I say something? Yes. Mm-hmm. Last week, I said at the end of the episode when Nate said we we're going to do Die Hard, and I'm like, well, can we not talk about if it's a Christmas movie or not a Christmas movie? Because you know those people every year say Die Hard's a Christmas movie, I'm like Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. I find it all so tiring and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen this movie before, um, but this is one thousand percent a Christmas movie. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I couldn't help but I could couldn't help but think it as we were watching it because it's Christmas music, it's Christmas party, people are. John McCain writes ho 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 with a Santa Claus hat. I think because it's an action film, right? Like that's what they're saying. Listen, is that name, but I think it it melds both of them. I agree with you. It melds both of them. It's an action Christmas movie. Name one night of the year that doesn't have that has more action than Christmas Eve. None. That man's got all over the world putting presents and stuff. That's a lot of action. He's a busy boy. Actions. All, Christmas is all about action. You got to go visit it. You got to go put presents under trees. There's reindeers involved. It's Action City. And I hate people that talk about Die Hard being a Christmas movie because I find it like, oh, epic bacon shit. That stuff. I hate that stuff. However, this is a Christmas movie. Even a broken clock's right twice a day kind of thing, you know? This discourse is correct, yes. But I'm glad we didn't watch it. I'm glad we didn't watch it at Christmas time. Oh, uh, that's tacky. It's tacky to do that, I think. It's yeah, tacky yeah. to watch it at Christmas. But yeah, it is I, a Christmas movie. Okay, okay, good. You guys, we agree, all three, on the same thing. First time in history. <laughs> I'm going to look into getting some squibs. Sure. <laughs> that's I feel like it's not the first time I had this thought and it's not gonna be the last and the only yeah. thing that's gonna cure my curiosity about it is if I get some maybe that's a better home defense system for me squibs squibs <laughs> like someone's like give me all your money and then like some like choir music starts playing and you go ah, 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 20 different squibs go off and they're like oh no there's another shooter exactly yeah Kate okay, got shot 20 times yeah that's not it see it's a great idea I think squibs as a priority trick would be hilarious and amazing now I'm just thinking about the episode where you're like the day after you buy your squib set up and then we record a podcast and you're like, well, Eddie got into the squibs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, squibs, I'd have to lock them up. But squibs would be, I think they're a great idea. I think it's funny as hell that someone thinks you got shot. There was a squib scene in this movie that was just, remember where there was a German pointing a gun at him and then he ducked and another German came out of nowhere mm-hmm. behind him. He, that squib went off. It looked like meat flew off his chest. That was a heavy duty oh. squib. Yeah, I know. Oh. That's the only way I could describe it. Meat flew off his chest. Would you guys die for... So they shoot the executive who doesn't have the access code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would just be happy to help them. Like, take some money. I don't want to die. Especially, like, for a giant corporation. Like, if this was, like, his small family business that was, like, they're struggling. First of all, they're not struggling. They got a fucking grotto in the middle of the office. Exactly. They got mermaids and shit coming out of there. Like, uh, they're doing fine. There was a model ship in there for you, Nate. Do you see that? Oh, buddy. No, yeah. There's models that have models. 
Yeah. Because it's like a whole model bridge setup, and then going under the model bridge is a model ship. I was I was a uh, fucking in model heaven. <laughs> and do you want to know how I knew I wasn't gonna like John McClane? Um, when he walked into the, the plaza, the tower, and he had to scan or look digitally for his wife's office, and he looked at the security guard and went, cute toy. Like, he's not embracing technology. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Especially because <laughs> it was 88. Like, could you imagine him now? He's like one of those people that are like, oh, the problem with kids now is they're always on those phones. Oh, John McClane does not like cell phones. He's, no, it, he doesn't have yeah. one. No, he has he a flip like phone that. for work, and that's it. And even then, he's he's like always complaining about it. Like, ah, I gotta take this thing with me. Like, uh, yeah, this is how they know how they keep a track of you. And then at some point, halfway through the movie, he like it rings and and gives up his location, so it even like reinforces his belief that these cell phones are they're just no good. They're no good at all. Um, I didn't like. That's how I knew he stepped off the wrong foot with me. Um, but there was a Jeffrey Dahmer looking German guy in a gray sweatsuit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember, remember the first was, guy he killed. He looks exactly like yeah. Jeffrey Dahmer. That was good. And that was the brother. And then the other guy got sad. He had a moment. Yeah. You kind of. Blonde, the blonde guy. He's got the long hair. Yeah. Well, every bad guy has pretty sick flow in this movie. It's true. But if I'm Hans Gruber, I'm bringing hair ties for everybody. Like put that shit up. <laughs> well, now if they redid it, they'd all have like man buns. They'd yeah. Yeah. Like, it does. Yeah. yeah. That's better. It doesn't look professional. If you're walking around with your hair going like that, when you're trying to take over the plaza, if you're trying to do action, it's not a good idea to have hair in your face. Like you're trying to aim your gun. Exactly. It's like wearing a cape. It's going to get in the way. In the peripheral <laughs> vision. You can't see. John McClane at the side of your eyes because you got that stupid fucking hair in your face. Yeah. Or or even worse, you're like, the hair is like scaring you as you walk through the dark corner. Yeah. And you're like, ah, what was that? Oh, it's my Is that hair. a spider <laughs> on my back? Uh, yeah. Is that what hair. happens to you, Nate? <laughs> sometimes <laughs> sometimes my hair tickles my back and I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Nate's in a constant battle his whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Who thought of this idea? Make him be barefoot the whole movie. It's diabolical, but it's such a it's such a great story. Thing. So vulnerable. And that part when he pulls a piece of glass out of his foot and it says "Die Hard in Blood," yeah. that was crazy. Do you guys see that? <laughs> yeah, that part was crazy. The blood dripped off the glass into the sink, and it spelled out "Die Hard 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it made the movie totally unbelievable that he had no shoes on the whole time because you couldn't win. There's no way you could win with no shoes on. Why is that? Oh, you're at a construction site and you got no shoes on? You're going to win against 25 Germans with long hair and guns? I know that I haven't had as many feet issues as Brett, but I have stepped on a lot of nails and glass and all kinds of things. And you can work through it. You can still persevere through having cut up feet on the bottom. Yeah, I wouldn't have cut the bare feet. I would have just had a lot more moments of him going, ah, ah, oh, ah. (laughs) That's yeah, because that's why I'm not, I'm not believing. Like, there's no way you your feet are gonna hurt. Can we talk about the sexual tension between Carl Winslow and John McClane? Right. Holy shit! There's one part that's so funny where he goes, "I love you, baby," and a lot of the guys love you. Yeah. <laughs> like <I know>. what? <laughs> <laughs> Did they have a, did they know each other before this? No. <laughs> no. That is what's so odd about it because yeah, there's a lot of familiarity that's not earned. No, he could have he could have been talking to a German that was a double agent. That shit made me laugh. <laughs> uh now I know the Yippie Coyote part. I don't know what that's all about. I didn't know. I heard it all my life, but I never knew what why he said that. It, it's and it works during the movie. It totally works. For sure. He said jerkweed, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't do this. I think those funny curse word, like, ways of talking mean to people without actually using curse words in movies are some of the best things in life. I've been calling, I say ding ding dong a lot now. Like, you're a ding dong. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I would rather be called a dickhead than a ding dong. Like, honestly, I'd rather be called a motherfucker than a ding dong. There's something yeah, so, like. Yeah, motherfuck me anytime. Just like, yeah, there's something like eviscerating about being called a ding dong. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. If you're telling a story about the argument you had with Kate, like, 
and you're telling someone like, yeah. And then she's like, you listen, motherfucker. People are like, yeah, okay. And, but if you said, she, she said, looked at me, it's listen, ding dong. <laughs> like that's more per- it's way more personal than motherfucker yeah no it'd be the end of the show <laughs> yeah it's like oh fuck well we gotta yeah we'd have to have a, a meeting off offline you know it's like there's there's it, you know when you're in a relationship there's certain lines you just can't cross you could never bring up certain things or there's no turning back and ding dong is one of those things if you said it and you meant it yeah it's no coming back from oh, that oh yeah Ooh. I didn't, the whole scene with the SWAT team with their little toques on running towards the building and one guy gets caught up in a thorn bush. What the fuck was that about? I loved it. There's so many little, this is what I noticed about this movie that's very, very different from modern action movies is there's so many little moments that are deliberate that add like a texture to this movie that wrote the one guy cop getting caught in the rose bush and going ow <laughs> it's so funny <laughs> when the bad guy's like setting up behind this counter and then he looks down and the counter's got chocolate bars in it and he like reaches under the counter and grabs mm-hmm. a chocolate bar it's just like there's all these little tiny moments that didn't necessarily like <laughs> there's this moment in the helicopter when the one cop's like this is just like Saigon and the other cop's like I was in junior high dickhead <laughs> That doesn't add anything at all to the movie except for, like, a little bit of texture, a little bit of fun. I I really like that shit. I did, too. And that moment was very – that was the energy I could feel. Like, there are so many, like – I know they don't have roids, or maybe they do, but, like, such that masculine energy of, like, we get to eviscerate something. Mm-hmm. Like, and then he says that. And it – because I was thinking that, and then he had that, and then he, right after that, said that line about, this reminds me of Stugon. Yeah, where you, like, murdered women and children. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you did war yeah. crimes? Great. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Trump? And you're so Great. excited? Oh. Yeah. And John McClane, at one point, when he sees the SWAT team coming in, he goes, no, you macho assholes. And I like that. I liked him calling out, like, the stupidity of macho-ness. I was like, in 88? That's that's cool, man. And then we see that again when it's that horrible coked douchebag oh, executive. Alice, Alice mm-hmm. was terrible. He's a salesperson, and he thinks that translate to terrorist activity. Like, ugh, I'm angry about it. I can't even talk. I have, listen, every good heist movie always involves a vault, correct? Many. Most of them. Many. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them. I have a way to around that, a fix of your vault being broken into. Okay. Put a live bear in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> well, now hear me out. No, are you no, that's it. That's it. Feed the bear. How two, do you feed the bear? You have two bears. They do 12 hour shifts rotating. Oh, okay. Two weeks odd day shift, two weeks on night shift, and vice versa. You feed them through a slot. Okay. Same as you would at a zoo. Yeah. They have a little feed station. Well, you can't feed them too much because you want them to be hungry and mad. Good point, Kate. Good point. I think just being in a, in a, in a vault. Okay. I see now animal people are like, you can't imprison them like that. Sickly bears that are going to die. Put them in there. <laughs> you could, listen, put a bear in there. Put a shark, a crocodile. Put something in the vault. Sure. And that's it. Your problems Put solved. the grotto in the vault with crocs in the grotto. There needs to be lasers with the animals. Silverback gorilla. Put them in there. You're not getting past the silverback gorilla. You could pump gas to knock the gorilla out, but then that's where the science nerds come in and come up with the filtration system. Gotcha. Other, that's how you save your vault. Hollywood, there, there's your next one. There you go. Okay, we did. We're doing good work today. We're doing great work today. Um, I don't have any more notes. Uh, oh, my last uh, note is: uh, New York guys hate California. That's a big part oh, of Bruce Willis's yeah. character. Is him going like California, come out to the coast, and he, vice versa. The LAPD commissioner guy was like, and they're like, "Is this one of your guys?" Oh, no, no, from New York. We didn't mention this, but I like that. Uh, who is the guy he liked? The police officer. 
Carl Winslow was driving away and we he have threw to stop calling him Carl get... Winslow. His name is it's... Reginald Val Johnson. <laughs> Reginald Val Johnson Winslow. was driving away and to get his attention, he threw a dead man out the window, yes. which is the, the... best yes. way to get someone's attention. You throw a dead body at somebody. It's, it's effective. What can you say? Casual. Yep. And then he, and then he, I think he says, welcome to the party. Like there's a lot of good <laughs> lines. There's a lot of good lines. Great lines. Movie. Jerk weed. Jerk weed. Uh, well, would you guys like to do the official Die Hard quiz? Yes, I'm nervous. Um, I'm not nervous, and yes. I haven't won yet this season. Yeah, you're sucking, bud. Yeah, I'm 2-0. Oh oh. Well, I'm 2-0. And this is the test for this month. Uh, my goal this month is to win uh, all of the quizzes. This will be. This is the hardest part of the journey, though, is with the quiz that you write to try to get through two opponents at once. Yeah. What am I, Bruce Willis? I know. Twenty-five <laughs> Germans. God. Uh, so let's see how this goes. Uh, the Die Hard quiz. It's seven questions. Classic Nate rules. Uh, question number one. How long has John McClane been a cop for? He says this. He tells the guy in the first scene of the movie Mm -hmm. when he's riding on the airplane. Is it 11 years, 13 years, 12 years, or 14 years? And we'll start with Kate. Uh, 12. He has been a police officer for 12 years. He has been a cop for 11 years. Uh, oh, I was oh, very confident. Very confident. Uh, Holly's creepy co-worker Harry invites her over for mulled wine and what cheese? He says, I'm thinking of having a fireplace, drink a little mulled wine, and eat some aged camembert, aged roquefort, Aged Brie or aged Emmental? What cheese does Harry think pairs with mulled wine? Rockford. Brie. Catherine. No. Well done. I really thought I was going to get you guys with the camembert. It's just such a good oh. thing to say. It's so tempting. Uh, and I don't even know if that exists. It, brie doesn't seem like the kind of cheese they age, you know, out of all of those. I think Brie, brie is bake. one you heat up. Yeah. You yeah. bake it, and then it's really gooey and yummy. Joseph Yashinobo Tagaki was born in Kyoto. What year was he born? 1935, 1934, 1936, or 1937? 1934. 1936. Choo-choo. No! He was born I in 1937. 1937. Mm. Hans Gruber hums a little Beethoven as he rides in the elevator. What does he hum? Nerd. Next question. Ode to Joy. Moonlight Sonata, Fiorelis, or the Emperor Piano Concerto? Uh, B. Moonlight Sonata. I'm going to say Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. For Fiorelis? Choo choo. No, this is horrible. He hums Ode to Joy, which then is later called back when the vault opens and Ode to Joy plays when they see all of the money they're about to steal. Nerd ass question. So what, um, what number are we on and how many do we have? Oh, it's not We are on number five and I have three and Kate has one. Okay. And we have seven? Seven questions. What floor is John McClane on when he pulls the fire alarm? The 34th, the 32nd, the 35th, or the 33rd? 33. Uh, 34. 
No. I knew it. He I knew was it. on the 32nd floor, two floors above the party. Damn. Question number six. What kind of chocolate bar did the henchman steal from the chocolate bar cabinet? An O. Henry, a Nestle Crunch, a Snickers, or a Hershey's bar? A Nestle Crunch. O. Henry. Gone forever. Brent gets a question correct. It's a Nestle Crunch. Gone forever. Okay, at least I, I didn't get shut out. I was confident so much about 1936 and the first question. Final question, just for fun. What is the final song that plays at the end of the movie? Is it Let It Snow? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas or Santa Claus is coming to town. I'll be home for Christmas. That's correct. I'll be home for Christmas. Choo choo. No. Choo choo. Let it, it snow. Make, let it snow. It let just it makes snow. no sense. It's mo makes most sense to play I'll be home for Christmas because that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's going home yeah, now. I for thought I'd get you. And it's they're you in California. Me. It's not gonna snow. You're looking at palm yeah. trees. It, do, it doesn't make it. I sense. don't like it, but I, I don't respect I don't like it either. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. I feel like this was a good quiz. Like I didn't do any questions that were too that you couldn't know. No, it's an excellent quiz. It's me being overconfident. And mm -hmm. I have to I have to look into that. Uh so wow, I'm three and oh this year. Uh, this is fucked, can you can I be stopped next week? I guess we'll have to, you'll have to tune in to find out. Uh <laughs> Would you guys like to hand out some gold medals? Yes. Only if we can give out silver and bronze. Okay, just this once. Bronze, 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 everybody. That's what my bedroom is like at night. <laughs> I'm going to give my bronze medal to Mrs. B herself, Bonnie Bedelia, who plays Holly. Double B. She's a real 80s working mother, holding down a job while raising children with the help of a paid nanny without the love of a husband or a good man or wife. Mm -hmm. She gets a bronze medal. St. John McClain's not a good man. Well, he's not around. He uh, decided to stay in New York. Like me, if my wife gets a high-powered executive job and it's like, do oh, you no. want to stay and be a cop or move to California where your rich wife? I'd be like, <laughs> sign me up. Let's go to California. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, good point. Um, my bronze medal is going to Reginald Bell Johnson, who plays... Carl Winslow in Family Matters, but he also plays Sergeant Al Powell in this movie, and he has a huge crush on John McClane, and he helps John McClane, talks him through it, and it's just one of the most unnecessary but funny roles in an action movie. Uh, I'm giving my bronze to Clarence Gilliard, who plays Theo, who is the, like, computer slash mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. breaker for Hans Gruber. His performance is super weird and funny. Mm -hmm. He's doing all sorts of business. He's physical. He's doing stuff with his voice. He's sarcastic. He like, he, this was like a, could have been a very normal, un, like very forgettable role. All the other henchmen are very forgettable and blended, but he completely stands out. He did a great job. He was in uh, Walker, Te Texas Ranger forever. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he died of alcoholism. Did he really? Yeah. So if there's any alcoholics listening, that could happen. So maybe think about that. Maybe think about that. Stop drinking. It will kill you. It'll get you. And then we'll get you on service here at old Heaven's Harbor. Heaven's Harbor. Got a date at Heaven's Harbor. If you keep drinking. That reminded me of when he, his performances. Any. Um, people that are, are going to commit like a robbery like that and they, they use safety gear, they're serious. <laughs> like 100%. Yeah, if they have like reflective vests and safety goggles and stuff like that, you know that these guys know what they're doing. My silver medal is going to Mr. Aphasia himself, Bruce Willis, John McClane, 
for just being a great action star. We 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 stand a Bruce Willis, and uh, this is one of his the highlights of his career. Uh, my silver is going out to Alan Rickman, who plays Hans Gruber. Uh, he just played the role the way that he would play it, which was very funny. I think, like Nate said, talked about uh, ladies and gentlemen, and the oh 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 part, like we sound like the Count from Sesame Street. Mm-hmm. And anybody that could pull off that pencil thin uh, beard he has, yeah, he deserves the silver. Uh, I'm gonna follow Kate's lead. I'm gonna give my silver to Bruce Willis. I I have something to admit. When I was like younger, I wasn't a big Bruce Willis guy. I I just didn't have the exposure to appreciate him for what he did. But now as an adult, I think. Bruce Willis is probably underrated. He's probably underrated as an mm. actor. He makes lots of interesting choices. He's his later career is great. His early career is great. Uh, I like that. I even like that M Night movie where he Unbreakable is out. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Where he's that's like good. a superior. I think he's great in that, and I think that might be my favorite M Night movie actually. Uh, Bruce Willis gets my silver medal. You liked it better than The Village? Better than The Village, yeah, yeah, I did. (laughs) Yeah, I did. All right. My gold medal goes to Hans Gruber, played by Alan Rickman, one of our greatest actors. We miss him. Goodbye and farewell. He did? Hope you're doing well on the other side. He died of pancreatic cancer in 2016. Sailed out of Heaven's Harbor in 2016. My silver is going to Mr. No, Bruce Willis. Gold. gold medal is going to Mr. Bruce Willis, who looked one of those rare people that can uh, be a white guy and shave their head completely bald and look better than they did with hair, which isn't fair. So um, that alone. Great head. Uh, great head. Good, good shape. He has beautiful children with De- Debbie Moore. He's unfortunately... Has a light, uh, I forgot the name of the condition. Frontal lobe dementia. Yeah, and he's still at pictures I've seen. He still looks like he's having a good time. So that's good. Always one of my favorite actors. Gold medal, Bruce Willis. Yeah, I'm going to follow Kate's lead on this one again as well. And I'm going to give my gold medal to Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman. Uh, I wish Alan Rickman had gotten to be in more movies. I think... Uh, there's a lot of years we could have had them and they didn't use them enough. Uh, this is an iconic performance. I'm going to say the I word. It's iconic. I think a lot mm-hmm. of bad guys after 1988 just tried to copy Alan Rickman and be like, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to do a Rickman on this one. Pull a little Rickman out of the toolbox. Uh, he's fucking amazing in this movie and he's, his voice is so funny and... There's like that scene where he plays like a pathetic worm when McLean like finds him on the roof and he does the American yes. accent. It's so mm-hmm. like funny, but also great performance of him being like, oh, no, oh, please don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just lo- I loved him. He's great. Gold medal. Gold medal. No turkey sandwiches this week. That's okay. Too many great performances. Um. Would you guys like to give the film Die Hard 1988 a rating? Yes. Let's read it. The script for this movie. What did you guys think of the script for this movie? I think it's, I really enjoyed the Naka Tomi name, Tower. I like that part. Yeah. And it's based on a novel. Did you guys know that? No. I read that. Yeah, it's based on a novel called Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. You could play one of the maps on Call of Duty was Nakatomi Tower last year. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, I I can't give it anything more than an eight, though, based on uh, Carl Winslow's role and uh, jerkweed sayings. I am going to give it a nine. Um, I didn't... I would have wanted to see more of Argyle or I don't, 
that just character threw me off. So that's why it gets a nine. I, this is hard. Do I, do I have any problem with this script at all? I like the idea. I liked the crime made total sense. I like how they trick the FBI into helping them open the safe. I'm going to give it this movie a 10. I don't, I have no improvements Mm -hmm. that I could make to this movie. Uh, So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give this movie a 10 in the script department. Uh, The art direction in this movie, the sets, the props, the costumes, the hair cuts. What did you guys think of the art direction in this movie? 10. Very dark. Everything was dark. There wasn't a, I give it a nine for that. Did you see the indoor water park grotto? I mean, Mm -hmm. grotto, all of the Asian decor, Mm -hmm. all of the hair, the hairstyles, the clothes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bonnie Bedelia's hair. Yeah. It was full gray sweatsuits from tip to toe. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, because of they didn't wax John McCain's chest, this gets a 10 from me. Ooh, thank God they didn't. Love a hairy chest. Uh, oh, this is going to be contentious. The music for this film. What do you guys think about the music for this movie? I barely noticed it, really. I'm going to give it an 8. Um, it's an action movie in the 80s with Germans involved, and they totally fucking whiffed on the music. No bangers. <laughs> Nothing remarkable. Kate's right. This gets a unfortunate six. Ooh. Oh my God. Yeah. I knew I know. you were going to sandbag it. I just knew it's not it there sandbagging. Wasn't. Yeah. It's just, there's not one banger. It was, Kate even said it's unremarkable. Um, I'm going to disagree with you guys so deeply. The music for this movie is fucking awesome. It's oh. awesome. It's full <laughs> symphony. It's, Fucking, uh, they're banging out a march on that snare drum and bringing in those woodwinds and whoo, whoo, what a score. Uh, I'm going 10. This is a 10 for me. See, uh, this is the improve. problem. The, it, action movies don't need scores. They need soundtracks. Oh, no, it, it elevated. It elevated you, the drama. You, you have Radar Love by Golden Earring playing while he's shooting <laughs> Germans. <laughs> We got a different movie all together. Or if they had played Fortunate Son when the cops get in the helicopter, like every Vietnam yeah. movie. Like, exactly. <laughs> <So fun>. <laughs> <laughs> Radar Love, Fortunate Son, and like, what's one more that could they, they could have played? I don't know. Fucking, we are the champions at the end. I don't know, something like that. They okay. had a, they had they had a catalog they could pick from. They chose not to. Action movies don't have scores. Die Hard also features Christmas in Hollis by Run DMC, which I did not notice. Mm-hmm. Oh. I do love that film. I do love that song. Okay. I have to change. I forgot about the Run DMC Christmas song. It's seven. I okay. apologize. Fair. Seven. Seven. Um, this is an action thriller film. As an action thriller film, how would you rate this movie? Ten. Action. Now, they should have just called it an action film. The thriller part. You didn't find this thrilling? I find it thrilling. <sighs> that helicopter blowing up was pretty good. I like how co- how complicated their plan was. But I could also follow how complicated it was. It's the no sh- I, I can't give it a 10 because of the no shoes. Nine. He falls out of a window. What's more thrilling than that? Having shoes on. Nine. Okay. <laughs> uh... I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this movie. I hadn't seen it in a long time, probably 20 years. Um, I can't, I can't think of an action movie that I would prefer to watch than this one. I'm giving it a 10. It was fucking great. It was fantastic. Uh, and now as far as money goes, you got a friend and they love watching money movies in March. How much are you recommending this to your money friends? Uniquely unique money. You know, special money. I feel like there could have been more money. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah. Um, there wasn't really much cash on hand. No bear. I don't know what a bearer's bond is. I have to give it, but $64 million worth is a lot. Um, it's, but that's fancy money. So 640. It's like now a billion dollars. Six hundred. Okay. Well, that's a lot of, that's a lot of million, whatever the Germans use. I'm going to mm-hmm. give that Kroner Deutschmark. A nine. Okay. I don't even know if what the kroner is. 
it, it is something. It's Danish. Uh, yes, I. Someone they love money, like six hundred forty million dollars. That's a lot of money, and uh, you could buy a lot of different kinds of stuff with that. Nine. 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 Like the Germans say. Nine. Yeah, like the Germans. <laughs> Hans Gruber, you hear, bud? <laughs> Die hard. Die harder. Die hardest. This movie gets a 45.1. 45.1 for Die Hard. That's fair. That's higher than I thought it would be. Uh, now is the part of the show where we need to pick the audience choice movie for the last film of March. All right, you guys want me to list all our options off? Yes. All right. We have Other People's Money, A Fistful of Dollars, The Color of Money, Indecent Proposal, The Killing, Two for the Money, Come Bad, Rounders, Pool Hall Junkies, Good Time, The Oceans Movie, Drive, A Simple Plan, Blank Check, The Big Short, Blood Simple, Brewster's Millions, Trading Places, The Road to El Dorado, True Romance, Glengarry Glen Ross, Inside Man, Wall Street, Life Stinks, Trading Places. I've got a few. Let's start with you. You go Kate. first, Nady. Okay, you I'll go first. Yeah, last. I never go first. Uh, I wrote down Color of Money, Rounders, Ocean's Eleven, Blank Check, Trading Places, and Inside Man. I love all of those. Fun fact Inside Man was the other movie I was talking about last week when I said a uh, movie with Denzel. That was the one I was trying to decide beside. So that's just a little fun fact. Which one? Inside, Inside Man. Man. Inside man. Um, you want to go, Kate? No, you go, Brent. I have The Killing, Ocean's Eleven, and Trading Places. So you two have Trading Places in common, and I had uh, Other People's Money, The Killing, and True Romance. But I'm open to all of the ones you guys said, because there's... Well, here's actually, you're going to have to be the tiebreaker here, Kate, because me and Brent both picked Ocean's Eleven and Trading Places. That Those both got two votes. So which of those okay. two movies would you rather watch? Have you guys seen them? Yep, I've, I've seen them seen both, both multiple times. Do you guys have a preference? Uh, I think I do. Say it. Ocean's Eleven. Let's do it. Let's do Ocean's Eleven. It's a great film. We got some movie stars in that movie. I could do with some more Brad Pitt in my life. Yeah. We got, and, and there's a lot of money in that. Bernie Mac. Oh, <gasps> Bernie Mac. Ah, oh, that, that would have sold it really fast if we had all remembered yeah. that Bernie Mac was in it. Yeah. Yep. It would have been pretty sold. quick to jump on that. Andy Garcia's in it. Elliot Gould. And it's, I'm pretty sure that's Soderbergh. A little, little Soderbergh, one of our yeah. uh, most unique filmmakers. Uh, okay. That sounds fun. So all next right, week we're going to watch Ocean's Eleven to Excellent. close out the month. Uh, and that means all that's left to do is say good night, Kate. Good night, Kate. Good night, jerkweed. <laughs> the heist is impossible. Why do this? Why not do it? But these guys... You're pulling a job, aren't you? ...are just crazy enough... You gotta be nuts. Exactly. ...to pull off the con... Someone called for a doctor? ...of the century. Do it already. George Clooney, Matt Damon, Andy Garcia, Brad Pitt, and Julia Roberts. You're either in or you're out. Ocean's Eleven. I'm staying in. Um, I feel bad. I'm sorry to uh, Jennifer. I don't mean what I say about old people. Brent takes it back. Okay. No, I don't take it back. Oh, okay. I, don't, I <laughs> like old people. I was trying to help. I was trying to help. <laughs> no, no, they're not wise. They're just, that's all. Oh, okay. Double down. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah.